Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. We'd love for you to say hello in the chat. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come, let us worship our living God. Knowing that we are forgiven, love people of God, let us join in our prayer of confession. Spirit and breath of life, before you, we recognize that our spirits are not fully alive. We have succumbed to the sin of despair. We have been lifeless, not lively in our faith. Breathe your spirit of power into us that our faith may be active in the word and deed and that your name might be glorified in Jesus. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. What's happening, church? And welcome to the children's sermon on a Sunday morning. I hope you're doing great. The thing is, I might not be doing as great. If you were with us last week, I was searching for like something to quench my inner thirst. This week, I got news for you. I lost something and I can't seem to find it. Um, I'm a semi-organized person, but I can't find my favorite green pen. I think I threw it in this box, but I, to be honest, I don't know where it is. Would you help me? Would you mind helping me look for it? I mean, you guys are kind of remote, but maybe you could look in here. You see, I mean, it's not, this one looks green, but this is like a marker. It's not really a pen. I'm throw this over here for a second. Uh, you just, there's like a green Sharpie. That's not the one. It kind of looks similar, but you know, all these different colors. This one's pink. Looks pretty cool. Um, there's no other green. Oh, neon green. This is not. The, so I have this special pen. I use it. It's green. I'm a teacher. And sometimes I leave comments back to my students on their work. And I love using green because it's an uplifting color. And I love writing them comments to let them know how great they did. And these, Jesus, this is not the right green. What am I going to do? All right. Well, I'm going to put this aside for a second because this, this kind of, this predicament kind of reminds me of a story that Jesus shared with some people. And he, he told the story about a shepherd 
who had a whole flock of sheep. In fact, a hundred of sheep, kind of like a ton of pens. Lots of sheep. Awesome, happy shepherd. However, one went missing. And he was stuck with a predicament. Where's the sheep? Well, this shepherd was committed to this sheep. He said, look, I'm going to let me, these sheep over here that are with the flock, I'm going to trust that the flock takes care of each other. And he went on this big old journey over rocks and plains and dangerous places, maybe pitfalls and things to find this sheep. And he finally found the sheep that had gone astray. And when he found that sheep, after lots of hard work and lots of looking, he brought it back and was so overjoyed that he even told his other shepherd friends about how he had found his lost sheep, the one of the, of the 100 right? Not the 99, the one that had gone uh, astray. And he wasn't upset at the sheep. He was joyful and glad that he had found the sheep and that it had been returned back home. Um, so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this one last look. I'm gonna, you know, there's some on the floor over here. I'm going to look. <gasps> Guys, you're not going to believe it. Check it out. I found my favorite green pen. Look at this. It's even got the little grip right here. You can tell it's like the special green. I'll, all right. I will have to write you a letter one of these days in the green so you can see it. Thank you so much for helping me look and for listening to a story in the meantime. You know, reflecting on this, it kind of makes me think about how kind of similar to pens, there's lots of humans in the world. There's lots of people. But there's not necessarily a human that's just as unique and special and individual and wonderful and blessed as you. And it's the same way in which God looks at us. Lots of pens, but each one is super unique and special and has this incredible place in his heart, this wholehearted love that he has for us as a special person. And sometimes we go astray. We leave God, we kind of forget to pray, or we forget to be mindful, or we forget to forgive or ask for forgiveness. And sometimes we need, are that lost sheep. So today, kind of like a lost pen, what I want to do is I want to remind ourselves that sometimes as a lost sheep, we need to be returned to God. Because God cares so much about us. He can't wait to welcome us back. He's got open arms. He's going to be like that shepherd rejoicing, telling his friends. The forgiveness is going to be incredible. And the love is going to be returned and in full measure when we do so. So if you're feeling a little lost this week, like I was with my pen, maybe we're lost and feeling a little jumbled bound with our lives. Take a minute to remind yourself. Sometimes it's just about saying, I got to reconnect. And I got to think about how I can get back to God. And maybe ask for some forgiveness to get there. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for being there with us day and night. You never leave our side. Sometimes we stray away like a lost sheep. We go across plains and dangerous places and places that we think that you might not be able to reach us, but that's just not the case because you are a persistent shepherd and can't wait to welcome us back to the flock. And indeed, you'll do so joyfully. So Lord, let us rejoice in that knowledge and just come back to you this week. Amen. Good morning, church. And now a reading from Psalm, verses 1 through 5. Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Psalm 32, verses 1 through 5 and verse 11. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped, as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover it up to my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Rejoice. In the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grumbling. What really is grumbling? I guess we grumble when we don't want to be really loud about what's bothering us, but we can't keep our critical words in. When they leak their way out, kind of against our better judgment, that's grumbling. The Pharisees and the scribes are grumbling because this fellow, that would be Jesus, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. That's just not the celebration they would expect from someone coming in the name of the Lord. It's not what the crowd around a religious leader should look like, this motley crew of tax collectors and sinners. So Jesus tells them, you've got it wrong. This is exactly what the gathered people should look like at our celebrations. Jesus tells us we should look like people who needed to find Jesus. We should look like people who needed to be found by Jesus, and now we're here, and that's really good news. News worth celebrating. I've told some of you before about what happened at my friend's ordination when he became a pastor. His brother, who did not go to church, said, Oh, how wonderful for you. For the rest of your life, you'll be surrounded by great, nice people. And my friend said, Oh, I hope not. His brother had no idea what to do with that. But it's just what Jesus said, isn't it? Church isn't supposed to be just a gathering of the great, nice people, the best of the best. It's supposed to be the celebration of the love of God made manifest in Jesus who forgives us and even eats with us and enters our celebrations. After all, even the greatest and the nice and the best of the best people are lost underneath in some part of our souls. Even when we think we have it all figured out, something can happen that turns life upside down and we are back trying to put our sins down and learn all over again. Church is supposed to be where we come when we know we need help and where we come before we figure it out that we need help. When we are wounded, when we are hurting, when we are angry, even when we're grumbling, church is where we come to meet God and remember the why underneath all of this life we are living. And what's more than that, church is the place that sends us out to look for the lost. We don't just come and rest and then put it away until next week. In this place of celebration, God calls us to see what we need to see about ourselves and our own lostness and open our eyes to see what we need to see in the world. Do you know people in your life that are lost? People who are disconnected, who have wandered away from the center that holds them in Christ. Do you know people who need us as part of the body of Christ to be there, to hold them in prayer, to open ourselves up to what it might take to go look for them? The tax collectors and sinners came to Jesus because in him they sensed grace and love and a new way forward. We need a new way forward in the life we are living today. The world has changed and is changing. But this story about the lost sinners is still true with a capital T. The grace and love of Christ that cares about the lost sheep has not changed. If there is one person we meet with that love, that is worth celebrating. Last week in the sanctuary in Pleasantville, I listened to Chris Dingman play the vibraphone. 
here in this place with a small group of people. In case you're wondering, a vibraphone is sort of a combination of drums and piano, similar to a xylophone. It was an amazing experience, breathtaking. The music spoke welcoming and light and peace into the space. And there were people there who are here on Sunday morning. And there are people who are not. There were people who came looking for healing and a place to feel like they belong. What a blessing to have a way for people to enter this space that feels safe enough to them to open their hearts to however God might provide healing for the wounds of the world. It's not the end of the story, but it is a beginning and a cause for celebration. Last week online on the Creativity Lab, we had this guest, her name was Lauren, and she was talking about life as a spiritual practice and finding our way to get spiritually fed. She talked about how her dad found meditation to be a great blessing and her mom tried, but just never really connected with it. And then she found her place, a choir, that sang hymns for people that were in hospice care. And then one of the other folks on Creativity Lab from another state talked about a choir for people with dementia. Singing hymns seems to be something that remains quite long in that difficult process of dementia. And then a young person from the city talked about how the music group she joined online had given her hope in a time when she really needed it. It felt to me as though we were celebrating finding ways to look for people and not leave them lost. It's easy to grumble about what isn't the way it used to be. We all do it from time to time, but I don't think we wanna waste much of the day that God has given us on the grumbling. Let's find our way forward. Let's look for the ones who are needing us to see that they are lost, even when those people are us. Let's be the body of Christ and celebrate that the love of God welcomes us all in the midst of our brokenness, in the middle of our confusion, in the choices we know we need to change. In all of those times, let us celebrate that Christ's love can heal our woundedness and make us whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, as we gather here this day, we come to you as we are. Open us up for this journey. Help us to see that your love is here for us and your forgiveness and grace are reaching out to us. Help us to keep our eyes open for those who need your love and help us to be a pathway, an opening, help for them on the journey. We pray this day, mindful of the danger and violence in the world, thinking of all those who are 
hurt and grieving and afraid. Be with them. Help them to know that they are not alone. Help us to know ways to reach out. We pray this day for those who are ill or in pain, who need your healing touch. We pray with those who are grieving that they might sense your comfort and your peace that passes understanding. Help us, O oh Lord, that all that we do, we might do to your glory. And let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.
No need to be afraid. Your eyes keep them open. Witness the world end. You'll find there's hope when you're facing an angel. The joy. Good morning, church, and now a reading from Psalm, verses 1 through 5. Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Psalm 32, verses 1 through 5 and verse 11. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sat as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover it up to my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Rejoice. In the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 